And if you look back at television the past 20 years, I'm 46. I can remember when I was 26, all of like in my mid 20s, all of this stuff started. Sports has already always been reality TV, just very high paid reality stars for the most part. Yep. But you look at all these Dancing with the Stars and The Voice and Survivor, uh, Profit with Marcus Limonis. You look at Bar Rescue with John Taffer. All of those mm. are reality, t- reality TV. Well, what's great is that in 2007, when Steve Jobs unveiled the iPhone and what became you know, smartphones and uh, devices that allow you to do so much, like you can shoot unbelievable content like right now i've got my laptop i've got this fancy microphone i've got another what is that a canon eos r something on my desk that films me when i talk on these things yeah those are expensive this phone 30 40 bucks a month or you pay six seven hundred bucks one time for it and i can create just about anything i can create on those and honestly it will look better for where it's it's consumed at which is the phone Hi, and welcome to the 91 Day Podcast. I'm Jonathan, and today I've got the pleasure of talking to Matt Plapp from America's Best Restaurants. Uh, This is going to be super neat as part of the reason that I do a podcast, in fact, the entire reason that I got started doing a podcast is because of Matt. Uh, One day, Matt and I were on a a coaching call, and I asked a question, and Matt gave me uh, just the simple answer. He goes, you need to start a podcast. And so we did last year, and now almost a year later, we've got Matt to join us, and, and Matt, I just want to one thank you for the encouragement to start the podcast but also thanks for taking time out of your busy day and all the things you're doing to join us a minute and and chat we're really grateful can you give us kind of a a 30 second overview of people that uh, may not know you the business owners and business leaders watching the podcast tell us a little bit about matt plapp and america's best restaurants cool well hey i appreciate you having me on and i'm glad that my my pressure pushed you to do something that i feel strongly about which is telling your story I've been in marketing and media since 19, I guess 96, technically. I graduated college in 98 and went into radio and television and was on the sales side, production side, eventually made my way into the the sales side exclusively, developed a website for a family business back then, and the the rest is history. I've had a digital marketing company since 2008. In essence, I guess we call ourselves a digital marketing company, but we work with a lot more. I mean, one of our biggest assets is teaching our clients how to tell their story in their community. And one thing we encourage our restaurant clients is to have podcasts. Not enough of them listen to us, but we're getting better every, every month, more and more are listening. But our company is America's Best Restaurants. We have 55 employees right now. Between our two divisions, our media and our marketing side, we work with about 800 independent restaurants across the country. We focus on helping independent restaurants, and our, our mission statement is to help them find more frequent customers. Because one of my taglines is infrequent customers don't pay the bills. I think you can understand that from a mm, business consultant standpoint. And our, our biggest element of that is trying to get the restaurants to understand the opportunity that exists today on this storytelling device. Everybody calls it a phone. Mm. I call it a media outlet because I come from radio and TV back in the 90s. And if you're an independent restaurant owner in 1999, 9.9 out of 10 of your marketing strategies revolve paying somebody to help you get your message in front of the right person. Mm-hmm. 2022 and 23 and 24 and beyond, you don't have to pay anybody for the most part. I mean, there's so much free opportunity out there that's just a matter of you taking action. No, I absolutely agreed. And, and I think that's uh, one of the exciting things about what we do as well on the, on the marketing side. You mentioned there something that really intrigued me, and, and we talk a lot on the podcast about storytelling. Can you give us some examples, Matt, uh, working with independent restaurants in particular, that's not somebody we work with, but for those that are watching, what type of things could an independent restaurant share as far as their story? What types of media should they be creating? And, and maybe even why a podcast for a restaurant? It's not something we normally think of. So. I'll pose a question to you and get your feedback. What is, if you picture this, you've got McDonald's, you've got Chipotle, you've got Starbucks. What one item do none of those restaurants have that an independent restaurant has? What is one asset, I guess you could say, that that independent restaurant down the street from here, Barleycorns, has that those three big brands don't have? I'm going to think local ownership and, and involvement in the community. 
They have an owner. You know, McDonald's, yes, it's a franchise, but most of the people that own McDonald's own 30, 40, 50 of them. They're not stepping in the restaurants. They're not right. in their communities. And I heard a quote about three weeks ago in Vegas from a guy named David Scott Peters, who's a restaurant operation consultant. He was talking about restaurants not having certain things in place to operate correctly. Checks and balances, theft management, operations from a cleanliness standpoint of how you market inside your restaurant, all these little items. And he's, everybody always complains. You know, say, oh, they, they won't do it. And he's, he posed the question. He said, then explain how there are multiple brands with 1,000 plus locations across the country that never have an owner step inside the four walls. Starbucks mm. was created by, was it Howard Schwartz or Schultz or something like that? Mm -hmm. He's not stepping in Starbucks. He's not on the three that are in Mall, on Mall Road here in Florence ever. But somehow right. they still operate at a very high capacity. So his challenge to those restaurant owners was somehow these big brands, these behemoths, have put in place systems and processes that allow 16 to 21 year olds for the most point manage the entire operation without an owner. They have a GM, a manager, a regional manager, you as an operator of an independent restaurant with one, two, three locations have you in there. Why well, look at that from the marketing side? What is the biggest advantage you have as a independent restaurant is that you have something that you can have an impact on the community, your story. Nobody gives a crap about the manager at McDonald's. If he were to go live on the Florence McDonald's Facebook <laughs> page and talk about managing McDonald's, okay, you're the same, and this isn't to belittle it, but for the most part, most people that would see it, you're the same as them. You work for a company. Mm -hmm. But if Bob Lorman of Buffalo Bob's off Mount Zion goes live and talks about, it's been 35 years. It's been some good times, some bad times, but you've supported me. I'm going to go live every week. I'm going to go live every day on my ride into the restaurant and talk about what's on tap for that day. Maybe it's a charity golf outing. Maybe a new employee. Maybe the Pepsi machine broke. I'm going to go live and tell that story because the number one, the number one TV type of TV consumed the last 20 years is reality TV. Yeah. I mean, you look at the bachelor survivor. Uh, what is the music one? Uh, next big singer or one of those things. Yep. Dancing with stars, all those Dancing types of things. Those yeah. are all reality TV. Well, all of us love that feeling of being able to walk into the restaurant and go, Oh man, that's, that's Bob. He owns a joint and that's big for a lot of consumers. And so mm -hmm. the biggest asset a restaurant has is the fact that you are in the community and you're out there and you're doing things. You go to the same churches they go to. You have the same kids that play for the same sports teams. You know, I crack up the number of times I go to a, an athletic event and I see a restaurant owner that I know they're like, Oh man, what's going on? Like there's one lady in particular. I've seen her at three different sport events the past two years. She owns a local restaurant. She's mm -hmm. never wearing anything about the restaurant there. She's never active in that community as that restaurant owner. She's just there as a mom of the players. And I'm like, wow, your, your big opportunity is to be here. Yes, as that mom, but also as the figurehead of that small business down there employing 50 people, giving back to the community, sponsoring this football game. Like That's a bigger story that Starbucks, McDonald's, Chipotle will never have. And I have a saying I like to use called you can, you can say, and you can outspend or you can outsmart. Well, mm. the reason that Chipotle has a line when you don't, the reason that Starbucks, last Friday, my wife and I drove by the Starbucks in Florence near our house, 7 p.m. on a Friday night. I thought there was a rock concert going on. So wow. apparently people drink coffee for dinner. You know that. <laughs> I feel sorry for their sleep patterns, but it was rocking. Well, you're never going to outspend McDonald's, Chipotle, or Starbucks, or Applebee's, or Cracker Barrel. There's all these brands that have so much brand equity, so much, so much financial resources, and they have a bigger footprint of their location. So when you have you know, 30 Chipotles in the Cincinnati area, that money stacked up allows them to dominate people's attention with paid marketing. Absolutely. Well, you as a one-location Buffalo Bob's off of Mount Zion in Florence, Kentucky, don't have those resources. But you do have this resource, and you do have this, your story. And that's most small businesses. Most small businesses, like guy that just pulled up to my office, Aaron Smith is a local realtor. He's got a story. He owns a real estate firm. He's got five employees. 
and I always promote to him and he does it. He listens. He's got a podcast. He actually has two and he films content every week. He's probably here showing up at our headquarters to film some content in one of our studios. And his advantage over other businesses like him is the ability to attach his name, his brand, his community standing with that company so that people relate to him differently. So when it comes time to make a choice, they choose the person they have a better relationship with, and there's no better way to get a relationship than to get on this device and, and put video and stories out there on TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, MySpace, if it's still around. I, I love it, Matt. And one of the things I really like that you shared there, you, I'm sure, run into this all the time. I know we do as well. The business owners we talk to, they don't know what to say on camera. And one of their big things is, what am I going to say? What am I going to talk about? Yep. And I love the one thing you said about why not as a, as a restaurant owner, as any business owner, we all drive into work or yep. you know, maybe we're lucky enough to take a helicopter, but most of us drive into work, okay? And why not take just five minutes? Use that mobile phone and talk about, hey, here's what's going on for the day. Because people in our community and the, and the clients that we're dealing with, they want to know who we are because they're not choosing to do business just because of our brand. Like you said, there's larger national brands. They're doing business because of the connection they make with us as individuals. That's a huge, huge share. Wow. Wow. I, I've never thought of it quite that way. I love that idea. Just, you know, yeah, what's going on today? What's happening? And I can see as a restaurant owner in particular, you know, I don't know how to fix a Pepsi machine, but I can relate if it's a problem that you're dealing with. And it helps me appreciate what you are doing when I walk into that restaurant today for lunch. And in fact, I may even be able to see you and go, hey, Bob, did you fix it? And I love that. That's fantastic. There's, there's so much that happens. I mean, the reason so much happens every day. In small business. And the reason that reality TV became huge, number one, the reason it became huge was the fact that it was a way for TV companies to have cheap talent. I don't know if you know that or not, but back sure. in the day, I, I saw a big interview with the guy that was Survivor, and he's like, What I love about this is that Seinfeld, they're paying a million dollars an episode to mm. Jerry and George and Elaine and Kramer. I'm not paying anything to these morons on Survivor that are jumping over barbed wire snake pits to try and win something. And yet consumers are captivated by it. So and, true. And if you look back at television, the past 20 years, I'm 46. I can remember when I was 26, all of like in my mid twenties, all of this stuff started. Sports has already always been reality TV, just very high paid reality stars for the most part. Yep. But you look at all these dancing with the stars and the voice and survivor uh, profit with Marcus Lemonis, you look at Bar Rescue with John Taffer. All of those mm. are reality, t reality TV. Well, what's great is that in 2007, when Steve Jobs unveiled the iPhone and what became you know, smartphones and uh, devices that allow you to do so much, like you can shoot unbelievable content. Like right now, I've got my laptop. I've got this fancy microphone. I've got another, what is that? A Canon EOS R something on my desk that films me when I talk on these things. Yeah, those are expensive. This phone, 30, 40 bucks a month, or you pay six, 700 bucks one time for it. And I can create just about anything I can create on those. And honestly, it will look better for where it's, it's cons consumed at, which is the phone. Yeah, and so true. I'm working on a, a presentation right now, tweaking our, our company presentation, our, our messaging based off of what I see and what I, I realize the opportunity is. And I'm walking onto the airplane yesterday and I'm leaving. I was in Key West, Florida. It's a small airport. I'm walking up the little ramp to the plane. I look over, there's the luggage cart. There's three people work that work for Allegiant that are on that luggage cart. The luggage is already loaded onto the, onto the plane. Guess what all three of them are doing? On their phones. Or on their phones. Literally. I mean, I wish I could show you this picture. I might be able to like put it up on the screen. It's funny. Because it, it tells the story. Like you can see two of the three. Oh, yeah. They're on their phones. I'm granted. They got time to kill. And there's a third guy right here who's actually on his phone as well. Like was looking down at his other hand. Mm -hmm. Looked like he was sleeping at first. That's why it caught my attention. But he was on his phone <laughs> looking at his lap. They're they're not reading news articles more. I mean, they might be, but there's a yeah, better chance. They're watching video. They're on YouTube. They're on Instagram. They're on TikTok. They're on Facebook. They're on text. They're on email. Then they're on the internet. Exactly. And 
That is such an opportunity. And if you think about going back to the storytelling, most people have never owned a business. Most, mm-hmm. most people, like I don't know what the number is. I'd be willing to bet it's probably 98% of people do not own a business that go to work every day. And so when you think about that, that not only can they relate with your struggle, like the restaurant business is tough. You know, oh, the I agency bet. business compared to the restaurant business, a hell of a lot easier. But like <laughs> I remember our boat dealership. We had a boat dealership for nine years. That's how I got in the internet marketing world back in 1999. I created a website for a family boat dealership. Me and my dad and brother started. We started it on the internet, selling boats and campers on consignment online. We eventually grew it to a $15 million a year, three location business. Wow. I remember telling a friend of mine after I got out of radio, because for three years, I guess not exactly four years, I did both. I worked in radio full time and I worked at the dealership full time. And I worked 100 plus hour weeks. And that's what I did. And then I got out of radio and went completely with the dealership and then got back in the marketing after 2008. And so I remember telling my friends, it was kind of comical. I'm like, hey, man, because I remember I'm going to answer every phone call. I'm going to talk to everybody that walks in my front door because I remember back then the disrespect you felt as a sales rep for advertising that you couldn't get owners to call you back. They wouldn't answer your email. Back then, email wasn't huge, but still was there. You'd walk in the front door, and you would see the guy that owned the business at his desk, and he wouldn't mm-hmm. take the time to come out and shake your hand. And I was like, this is bull crap. I'm going to be the difference maker. I'm going to answer everybody. Within a month, I called Jimmy LaBarber and Doug Smith, two of the guys. Doug actually is my COO of this company now. I'm like, dude, it's not possible. What do you mean? It's not possible. Every day, I walk in the office. There's 50 things wrong. Somebody, Eric, backed a camper through our front window of our dealership. One of our four-wheelers came off the trailer on the way to deliver it to a client. Mm -hmm. Uh, A part is back ordered. The customer's mad. So-and-so called in sick. Like, it was a – every day was something. The only days it was never something was when we'd have a snowstorm and the entire city be shut down. And then we got to go back there and take the four-wheelers and our our seven acres (laughs) and pull each other on boat tubes behind a concussion twice that's a different story but (laughs) those are the stories that can be told and you're driving in have a phone on a tripod click record or go live either one works but click record if you want to and just say hey every day it's matt on the way to the restaurant big day today i got so and so starting she's brand new i look forward to seeing what she's gonna do oh yeah one of our one of our employees was valedictorian of high school we can't wait to see her we got a gift for it's pretty cool and we got a new menu we're going to work on. So I'm going to be doing some taste testing. By the way, if you're watching this and you want to come and taste test with me, it's pretty cool. I got about an hour I'm doing it. I could probably have five or ten people come in and taste test with me. Let me know. Hit me up. Message the page. Blah, blah, blah. Turn it off. You do that every day and you do it correctly. Mm-hmm. If you record it correctly, you now have content you can share on Facebook, Instagram, Instagram stories, Facebook stories, YouTube shorts, YouTube, LinkedIn, TikTok, Snapchat. You've got oh, on Twitter, you've got yeah. 10 places for zero cost that you could record that video, either have it assigned to somebody in your team or do it yourself. Like me, I record that video. I text it to Peter. Peter posts it everywhere. It's a no lie. Once you type out the description and maybe your call to action and something like a headline, it's five minutes to mm. literally type that out, record the video, and then probably 15 minutes to distribute it across 10 platforms. But so, so powerful. So you know, powerful. Why would you not do that? And that's going to make a connection with you like nobody else. And also, if you don't use that time to just spew me, 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 maybe on the way in, you're like, hey, big news. The Ryle High School Marching Band is leaving tomorrow for Hawaii. One of eight bands in the United States chose to go to the Pearl Harbor March we're stoked. Congrats, Ryle Band. I'm looking for somebody that knows somebody there that can connect me. I want to have them on a live like this in a restaurant. Like you can use oh, it, love it that way. And none of them are doing it. And when I say none of them, I mean literally 9.9 mm. 9 out of 10 small businesses, especially restaurants, are too busy working in their business and not analyzing the opportunity and taking action on things like that. That if you were to do that, and let's just imagine, Jonathan, like I remember my first live, I don't know about yours, my first ever Facebook live a long time ago, <laughs> there were this many viewers. Yeah, there was absolutely. Zero. I remember watching it be live and I'm like, huh, nobody's watching. Should I keep talking or should I shut up? And I'm like, screw it, I'm going to keep going. <laughs> and I had a guy the other day give me crap. He thought he was you know, trolling me on, on, on TikTok about how, oh man, who cares? You got 
3,000 followers and you got 100 views on your videos. I'm like, okay, I'll take that because the people I hear watch my videos like that give me feedback are restaurant owners. They're my target market. And if I take 100 views on TikTok every day, and we actually do 10 posts a day typically across platforms. So if I do TikTok, if I take those 10 platforms I mentioned, TikTok, yep, Instagram, yep. Instagram stories, Facebook, Facebook stories, my personal Facebook, I forgot about that one, LinkedIn, YouTube, YouTube shorts, Twitter. If I take all those platforms and get 50 to 100 views every day, 365 days a year, 10 years in a row. I mean, if you want the proof, look at Grant Cardone. He's got a book. I don't know where I put it in my office somewhere, but it talks about money follows attention. And he's got a so chart. True. He's got a chart that back in 2012, when his company was $3 million a year to last year where it ended 122 million, the chart mimics his Google, his Google trends. And his Google trends are fed by his brand being looked up online based on him messaging ever you're know, being on everybody's right phones, everywhere everywhere these platforms i remember when it happened it was i remember when it got really big you know who mari smith is she's a facebook yeah. okay so yep. i'm at a conference i'm at trafficking conversions guys i think it was 2016 and mari smith was up on stage she's like hey i'm gonna tell you about a guy and she's pretty damn smart on facebook she was wrong she here. is she goes i'm gonna tell you about a guy who is doing it all wrong Y'all might not have heard of him. Maybe you have his name's Grant Cardone. And at that time, I had heard of him, had no clue who he was. I had just seen his stuff because it yep. was popping up everywhere. He's going to ruin his brand because he's going live 14 times a day. He's posting 20 times a day. He's all over it. He's going to wear his audience out, and he's going to hurt his brand. You shouldn't do that. Here's what you should do. And it's funny as you look at this chart. I don't know where I got it. I got it somewhere in my office. It drive me crazy. It used to be sitting on my desk. Somebody might have jacked it. <laughs> But it's this chart that shows literally 2012 when he started doing that, 2013, 14, 15, when he got a little bigger. 2016, 17 was when he, I think it was like 14 live videos a day across wow. all platforms. And you can see the chart just go way up. And it's the same with a local business. If you're a restaurant and you were to go live on video 10 times a day, seven days a week for the next three years, as long as you're not a moron, as long mm -hmm. as you have good product, and as long as people can relate with what you're talking about, it's going to work. Now, if you get on there like Kanye West and spew a bunch of ignorant crap, you're probably screwed. But if you but get on there and yeah. you tell stories and you tell your story and you tell Sarah's story, the valedictorian in your restaurant, you tell the story of the local band, you tell the story of this new pizza you're making, you invite people down for a VIP night, it's going to work. It just takes Absolutely. you doing it. Well, and it takes that repetition. You know, it, it reminds me, I saw uh, Gary Vaynerchuk just recently did a video to a bunch of retail store owners. And I know it's a different audience, but still local business people. These were not chains. These were all local stores. And one of the things he made, he mentioned, I've never thought of, I'd love to get your perspective on Matt. He said, look, you know, if you've got a retail store, I'm assuming a restaurant similar, you've got times a day when your staff is down. There, there's not a lot going on. And he goes, instead of having them sit there and talk to each other, what about if you would pay them to pull out their phone, which they've got in their pocket anyway, and record one thing a day, one video a day per employee about something going on in the store that's positive. That's it. Don't direct them. Don't just one thing that's positive. Maybe it's, again, uh, a teammate you work with that had a great day, the celebration they've got. Maybe it's the fact you got something new in that day or you've got a new entree in the restaurant that you thought was really good or you taste that something that you've had for years and you never tried. What do you think of that as a concept? To take your team and encourage them and incent them just in their downtime. Pull out that mobile phone and create a short 30 to 90 second video once a day. I think it, you could create tons of content. Well, I feel like you're setting me up. Do you know my, or, do you know my origin story? Have you ever seen my video, I, how I got an in internet marketing? I have not, Matt. No. So 2002 ish three, we kept getting viruses at our boat dealership. I think it was 2003 because we ran our okay. new building and we kept getting vi every month. I had like a thousand, two thousand dollar bill from a, from a guy named Glenn Warner. There's a great local businessman, uh, died a few years ago. RIP, awesome guy. He's the one that turned me on the internet. He's the one that sold me a book in 1999 on how to create websites on Adobe PageMill. And if you know Matt Plapp, you know I'm not a tech person. Like, granted, I know how to do a bunch of crap now, <laughs> but I'm not a tech person. I'm a sales and marketing guy. Yep. And so he sold me this book. He became our, our web guy, our computer guy. 
and I'm getting every month thousand, two thousand dollar invoices because of him coming in and fixing virus. I'm like, bro, are you, are you screwing me? Like, are you set? Are you putting these viruses? Like, no, I'm not putting the viruses. I said, well, how do we fix it? Because I'm tired of every month the same crap. He goes, I've got an idea. We're gonna put a a gated a gate to the internet on your computer because it's coming from the internet. So this way, every employee will have a unique username and password that only they know. And then in the next month or two, we'll be able to see where people are going that's causing this problem. I said, cool. So we told all the employees, hey, we're not spying on you. We need to know where the virus is coming from. One of y'all's doing it, or two or three. It was at that time, I think we had about 40 employees. And I said, so here's what's happening. So they did it. About two months later, he finds the problem. He fixes it. It was this lady that was going to some suspect sites. Uh, sure. We won't go into that. And that was caused <laughs> the virus. I think it was a Trojan horse, whatever they called it back then. I don't know if they still exist. And so flash forward about a month after that, he comes in with this binder. No lie. I wish I had it, man. It would have been gold. It was like this big. And I'm like, what is that? And it's me and my dad. He goes, this is why your dad's going to want to fire everybody. And this is why you're going <laughs> to, this is what you're going to love. I said, what is it? This is the internet usage of your employees the last six months. And it's categorized. It's categorized oh, wow. by there's these things called chat rooms. Now remember, this is 03 ish. There is no, I don't know if Google, like Google was around, but there's no, like, Google, yeah. there's, there was no social aspect of Google as a search. Yeah, no there social no, media. There yeah. is no Facebook, Instagram. I don't know when YouTube started. I don't think it was even out then. And so he shows me this. And he's like, it's all categorized. And so to put a little perspective in it, when we hired people, we sold ATVs, fishing boats, and campers. That was the majority of our stuff. So they were outdoorsmen, good old Kentucky boys. And that was our, our avatar for our hire too. Like you couldn't come work for us. Like Richie Young, who worked for us, was a hardcore fisherman and hunter. Like half the time I couldn't even come work because he's it's turkey season <laughs> or deer season or he's the bass are biting on big bone. You know, Sean was the same way. Robbie, everybody in our company was one of those items. Even the 18 year old cashier had to prove that she knew outdoors because I don't like people that point and don't know what the hell you do. Yep. So taking that into consideration, he throws this binder on my desk. And he goes, I'm going to show you something. This is the Airstream Forums chat room. This is the Arctic Cat chat room. This is fishing.com, bassboatcentral.com, four-wheeling. It was all these chat rooms about that industry. My dad's like, oh, my God, they're on these all the day. I'm like, he's like, yeah, he's like, they're all fired. He goes, I told you. And he goes, but here's the <laughs> other part. Matt, they all have sponsorships. And then if you buy sponsorships on these websites, you now have the ability to market in these chat rooms in a non-marketing way. So I said, okay, let me look into this. And I had no clue what chat rooms were then, to be honest with you. So I went to fishing.com, bassboatcentral.com, Airstream forums. It was Arctic Cat ATVs. It was literally, that was like, I think it was 17 or 20 of these chat rooms somewhere in that neighborhood. And for whatever reason back then, it was 500 bucks to 600 bucks a year to be an exclusive sponsor. And their rules were, okay, like Bass Boat Central. We were the exclusive Triton Bass Boats dealer. Nationwide. Nice. Nice. 2,500 active daily bass boat owners on the website. So oh, we sold whoa. bass boats. There's 2,500 people on there every day that are using bass boats. I'm like, it's a pretty good fit. And it ended up growing to like 20,000 by the time we were done with, by the time we got out of the business. And they were on there every day. And so I went to them and the guy's name was Al. He's from Canada. It was like, hey, I think his was like 600 bucks, $600. You're the exclusive Triton dealer nationwide. Your employees have to have their real name. It can't be like fat Sean 76 it has to be Sean from Plapsburg outdoors has to have your company logo and a link to your website. Now I had no clue all this crap meant because he's like, in all you can't sell. And I need you to every hour. Somebody from your company needs to be in the chat rooms, answering the questions about things pertinent to Triton bass boats. That is what that's the trade off for you getting this exposure and the money. Okay, cool. So I went to Sean. I said, hey, Sean, I need a favor from me. He's like, what? I'm like, man, I bought a sponsorship on this website called Bass Boat Central. Like at this point, they've already forgotten about the virus thing. Sure. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I know Bass Boat Central. I'm like, cool. I need a favor. What? I need you every hour to go in there and answer questions pertinent to people, what they're asking on there. Like, hey, I got a Triton TR21 with a 225 Yamaha HPDI motor. I'm only getting 64 miles an hour. I should probably be getting 75 according to the specs. He gets in there. He's like, hey, are you waxing the bottom of your boat? Do you have an extra trolling motor in your – like he's diagnosing the speed problems. Well, mm -hmm. this was what we told every employee to do. We gave every employee – we assigned them a, a chat room and be, ap be uh, high, highly active in it. About four months after this – and this is like you can't make this crap up. It's so funny. 
about four months after that, we're in Nashville, Tennessee at the Grand Ole Opry. We're there for the Yamaha dealer meeting. And a guy named Ben Jarrett walks up, who's like the head of Yamaha marketing at the time. And we were the number three Yamaha dealership for two years in a row out of 2,500 in the United States for outboard motors. So we wow. had a little pull and we had grown. And we always did things kind of around the lines like you weren't supposed to do. Like we sold motors nationwide. <laughs> we sold them for very high margins, which was unique because typically people that sold stuff nationwide back then were, were giving it away. And yep. people got pissed off. But we were selling our stuff for high margins. But we were always like skirting the lines. on. We were really aggressive marketers. And so this internet thing comes up. And I had no clue what we were really doing. And so Ben comes over like, hey, I need to show you something. He goes to this website called Google. And I had no clue what Google was. He goes to Google.com. And types in Yamaha four stroke motors. And the search that comes up is Plaps Pro Outdoors, Plaps.com, number one, number two. Yamaha was like, love it. Or something. <laughs> and he's like, I need to know how you did this. I'm like, I didn't do it. He's like, Yeah, you did. I'm like, I didn't do it. He's like, You're not in trouble. I said, Okay, I probably did it. And so <laughs> what I, I said, Dude, I don't, full honestly, I have no clue how I did it. He's like, Well, I need your favor. Can you figure out? Because the internet's coming. You obviously understand it more than anybody else, or at least you're doing something that is sure. feeding it. I need you to come back and let me know because I was a part of when we were on the Yamaha tw top 20. It was a, called the Symposium 20 where they got the top 20 dealers together every three to four months. Usually it was Shreveport, Atlantic City, or Vegas. And they would get us together. And for five days, we would brainstorm what was working in our business. Yamaha would put together a packet and give it to the 2,500 or so dealers and say, look, the top 20 are doing this. And so I became the internet expert guy on accident. So I came <laughs> back. I said, Glenn – why am I beating Yamaha? And he explained search engine optimization. He explained what Google was. He explained backlinks. He explained, Matt, you've got 20,000 plus at that time backlinks to your mm -hmm. website from websites that are 100% about your target. And every one of those posts are stuffed with keywords that aren't selling. Like you're diagnosing people's engine and exactly. both problems and having, having valid conversations. So to kind of pull this all together, back to your example, Gary V was I leveraged 15 to 20 employees and said, do this every hour, and they got to have fun. So if you look oh, at yeah. it from a restaurant standpoint, maybe the restaurant or a retail company is like, hey, let's do some fun stuff. Like, get in the local chat rooms. Like, I promise there's probably 10, 10 Facebook private groups in every community that mm -hmm. those employees could be in there talking to. Now, the thing you got to do is be a person. Don't be a salesperson. Have right, fun. exactly. Talk about something. No, I think I, it's amazing. And thanks for sharing the, the backstory, Matt. I knew you guys had the dealership and I, I kind of knew that, but I had no idea about that whole, the whole forum issue yeah. and the chat groups. It's, I think it still applies today, even though things are different. Like you said, I just thought it was, it was one of those, well, duh moments when, when Gary's up on stage and he's like, look, you know, you've got people standing around your grocery store. They can't stock shelves eight hours a day. Yep. They're there pay them to go encourage them, pull that phone out and talk about something positive that's happening in the community, at your store, with a teammate, whatever it is. And two things. One, you're creating lots of content, which is relevant to your audience. And two, you're actually causing, because of that positivity, you're causing your staff to have a more positive outlook on things because they're not just focused on the fact that, oh crap, I got to work another three hours or this or that. They're now focused on things they love to do yep. and they're talking about positives and i i would say you don't have to pay them i mean if you if you empower them like yeah. I'm, if, like I'm imagine if i'm a restaurant owner and let's say i've got two or three hours of downtime and i'm like hey guys on top of making sure we set up our stations we do this we have the restaurant ready when the next customer walks in take your phone go live on facebook and and show how you make your fate your favorite off the menu burger absolutely every, every restaurant has their burgers that sells burgers mm -hmm. and they've got a burger that's now the menu that Joe from the kitchen makes. And it's like, dude, our guy Joe makes this burger. I call it the Joe Extreme. Let's go back and make it. I'm going to go, we're live, baby. And he goes back and he's like, Joe, make me the Joe Extreme. He's like, Shh, you know, burger sizzling, cheese going on, jalapenos, hot sauce, the pepper jack cheese, onion straws, a giant onion ring and bacon. And boom, there it is. And it's like, this is unbelievable. It's now the menu. But wink, wink, if you come in the restaurant, I'm sure you could convince us to make you a Joe special. I don't know what the hell it would cost. We'll figure that out. But, like, that's fun. And then you could Oh, also yeah. Have, and who wouldn't go there for lunch? Yeah. And so then you could have fun with that. I mean, empower your people to use that device also at other events. Like, 
I recently saw there was three things this year that stick out to me that I saw nobody covered in my region. Number one, that high school I was talking about, Rowe High School, is across the street, a mile from my house. It's across the street from a pizza restaurant, and it's within three miles of probably 25 local independent restaurants. I haven't seen where any of them talked about the Rowe High School band being one of eight bands mm. in the United States to go to Hawaii and march in the Pearl Harbor Memorial Parade. So how you're not using video to tell a story, how you're not finding out when the band is leaving the school on the mm. buses and walking across there with your phone and going, what's up? It's Matt from Starter's Diner. We're at Rowell High School. You see those buses? Yeah, kids are yelling. They're heading to Hawaii. Boom, 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 boom. You talk about it. Now you're leveraging your audience to storytell about something impacting the community, and you're not asking for them to buy food. Mm. And then the other one, which catches my attention, was my high school played in the game before the state championship against a rivalry down the street. I went to the game. They got pummeled. It wasn't even pretty. It's, you know, the schools are much different now from a standpoint of my old high school doesn't recruit and can't, and this one does. But nobody covered the game. It's two high schools within, like, I think probably three miles of each other, and there's no restaurants locally there. Like, hey, it's Matt oh, wow. Starter's restaurant. You know what? I took the night off from making pizzas. The team's got it. I'm here watching the Beachwood Lloyd football game to see who, which one of these Northern Kentucky powers goes to the state championship in two weeks. Let's check it out. Stay tuned. I'm going to come live every quarter with score updates. And then wow. that game led to Beachwood going and winning the state championship two weeks later, which, again, nobody covered. And then the funniest one, which to me is just mind-blowing, Jonathan, mind-blowing, is that you've heard of a, a station called ESPN, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, I think we've all heard of that one. So Ryle High School, let's see, my daughter's a junior in college now. She was a senior three years ago. Her, one of her childhood best friends, another girl, they were juniors. They won the state championship, and they were like player one and player two of the year, girls, the girls high school basketball. The second year, they would have won. It would have been their senior year, but it got canceled because of COVID. Like day before the game, the game got canceled, state championship. Oh, man. So these two girls ended up this past January, one was playing at Oregon, and one was playing at Washington. And they were playing against each other on ESPN streaming. So the mm. restaurants in our area could have had broadcasting inside their four walls a game that featured, because who gets no attention? Women's sports, we know that. Absolutely. You, know, they get, you could have had highlighted these two local girls that played basketball together their entire career that won the state championship that were the like, number one and number two girl bas female basketballers in the state of Kentucky went on to big-time Division I basketball, and they're on ESPN streaming playing against each other. Mm, what a like, story. It's huge. Nobody. Crickets. The Cincinnati Enquirer covered it. Nobody covered it. And I'm like, man, if I'm a restaurant, here's the opportunity. Number one, I'm going to watch the game in my, my restaurant. Number two, the month before the game, I'm going to have the parents of the one girl in, the parents of the other girl in for another one, and then the coach, and then some of the players that play with us. There's five opportunities to do five podcasts, four leading up to the event, to talk about what's it like seeing your daughter play at that level, living her dream of playing major college basketball. What's it like seeing your teammate? What's it like seeing two girls you coached? There's four weeks, the parents, the parents, the players, and the coach, that you could have live videos just like this. This is recorded, but it could be live. Yep. In the restaurant, talking, eating pizza, talking about this game. And then, hey, by the way, we're talking about this because in four weeks they play. We're having it here at the restaurant. We're going to have a huge event. Come in. We got a tent outside. We're going to have extra seating because it's going to be cold. It's like January, February. We're going to do some fun with it. And then we're going to have contests on Facebook. Who's going to score more points, Maddie or Lauren? Who's going to have more rebounds, Maddie or Lauren? Who's going to have this? Who's on Team Maddie? Who's on Team Lauren? You could do so much with it. And the cool part about it, is you could build up a 60-day marketing campaign that does absolutely zero talking about your restaurant. And mm. that's such a mind, it's a, a mind uh, messing with consumers' minds because absolutely they're like, oh, he's not talking about pizza. Maybe I'll go get pizza because the whole money follows attention thing comes back to what I call massive attention and excitement. If your restaurant gets massive attention and excitement on a consistent basis, you will sell more food consistently. Well, if you always talk about your pizza and how great it is, who gives a shit? People either mm. like your pizza or they don't, they go away. 
But if you're talking about the Ryle band, the Ryle basketball team, Maddie, Lauren, this game, all of a sudden you're in people's phones on Spotify and Facebook and Instagram and TikTok for a complete opposite of your restaurant. And the more often I hear about your restaurant in a context that's not that and I consume your, your marketing, I now all of a sudden want to eat at your damn restaurant more often. Mm-hmm. No, so true. Wow. Matt, absolute gold. I love the way you tell stories, by the way. And it's just, I'm, I'm sitting here enthralled going, man, this is like, you know, the, the best stories. Uh, and it, everything resonates. It's so amazing. I've, I've taken up a ton of your time today and I am grateful. But before we call it quits, I do want to ask you one more question. And that's about the name of the podcast. We call it 91 Day Podcast. And the reason we do, as I shared with you, is as we look forward, you and I both know there's a whole lot of people that don't have positive outlooks about the future. I'm not one of them. I believe the future is bright, but I think we're going to see a lot of people that are thinking about maybe starting their own gig, trying something new. And I want to ask you as a successful marketer and business guy, if you had to tomorrow start over and you had three months to create a business with the goal of generating $10,000 a month, either recurring or just on a billable basis, whatever, but build that business to, to that level and then hopefully beyond, what would you do, again, with only a grand in your pocket, what would you do to build that business? So I love this question because I've heard it before. I've heard like Grant Cardone when he did the yep. undercover billionaire. I think they had like a thousand bucks and their theirs was insane. It's a, a great series. You haven't watched it yet on, it is. on HBO or Discovery. I think it's yep. Discovery. But what would I do? So number one, I, I'm the belief that like we're in the digital marketing, so like the marketing space. There's a lot of people that start mm -hmm. marketing companies and they they want to go nationwide instantly when they haven't proven what they've done locally. So exactly. I started this company in 2008. From 2008 to 2015, we were 100% local businesses. And the way I found those local businesses was number one, BNI, was number two, uh, like chambers of co chamber of commerce events, mm -hmm. and number three, knocking on doors. So mm -hmm. what I would do with that thousand dollars is, and you can nowadays set up stuff really cheap, but I would get my logo, my colors, and my website and my social media presence done right away. I bet if you were pretty good at using the internet to find it, you could probably get that done for under 250 bucks, all of that. Agreed, yep. And then the next thing I would do is I would hop over and find a BNI chapter, which is Business Network International of professionals, and I would go and look at five or 10 of them. You could visit a chapter twice before you have to join. And so in Cincinnati, I think there's 30 or so chapters. So if I could visit 30 chapters twice, they meet weekly. That's 60 meetings a week you know, for a couple of weeks. I couldn't do that. But over a course of 60 days, I sure. can visit every one of those chapters twice, at least once. And then I'm going to join one of them. So now I don't even use the money to join because I'm, I'm going. And if I go to two a day, you know, that's two weeks I can work through those chapters, build relationships, get my name out shake hands, kiss babies. But then more importantly, I'm going to be able to find which one of those chapters has the influencers in it that can influence my target audience. Because if Perfect. I was doing it back then for restaurants, I'm looking, okay, I don't want to join a chapter that has 10 people that have no influence over restaurants. I want to join people that chapter has 10, 20 people that have influence over those restaurants that have them as clients. And so that would be my tactic. And then if I had any money left over, I would use it to start creating content. Now I got a cell phone. It's going to be free, but I might buy a better microphone or a little light. One of the reasons my camera is situated where it is, I have a giant window right here that this light from that mother nature comes in. I don't need lights in here. So I would invest in equipment to make my content. I put out more impactful and then I would just run hard and run hard and now hustle everybody. Great advice. And I, I think it, it fits in so well with a couple of the other people we've interviewed. And it's really about getting involved and connecting with people that can help you connect with your audience. And, you know, B&I Chamber, the great ways to do that without blowing a lot of money. Yeah. And I think so important based on what you said, having been in B&I's in the past, you know, we did that when we started. We This is our 13th year. We didn't go national until 2021. Yeah. Uh, and you know, that was our 11th year in the business or 12th year in the business. And we built it through BNI, through Chamber, it did exactly what you said. And it works. We, we were able, blessed, we built a seven-figure agency doing business in West Michigan. 
and then we were able to leverage that and, and grow. So obviously that one rings near and near near and dear to me because it's very similar to what we did. Great yeah. advice, Matt. Great advice. Love it. Well, as we leave people, if if so, a business leader is watching this and and obviously they're going to go, man, I, I love Matt. But if they got a restaurant and they want to find out what America's best restaurant can do to help them implement and do the things you're talking about, what's the best way for them to get in touch? We'll put links and stuff, but what's yeah. the best way for them to get in touch with you, Matt? So the, the best place to start, which will take you down my rabbit hole, is go to mattplapp.com, my name, M-A-T-T-P-L-A-P-P.com. And if you go there, number one, there's a form. It's free of charge. Fill it out. We'll send you some swag. This is, it looks like a fist bump. It's, it is, but it's also MP. It's my initials. So we send out swag boxes every week, free of charge to entrepreneurs who fill out the form along with a couple of my books and different guides we've got. Uh, and then you scroll the very bottom of that page and there's my social links, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn. Check me out. Follow me on those. Cause I'm always giving a lot of advice out, a lot of information about how to use marketing, how to use, you know, use your mindset, how to leverage content. Uh, and then you also will find links on there for America's best restaurants.com and things like that. Uh, but the biggest thing I encourage people also, I do this all the time. If you don't think I'm crazy, I put my cell phone number out there. My cell is 859-743-2408. That is this device right here. It's my phone. I have one cell phone. I'm not like Kevin Gates or rapper. I got two phones. I only got one. And so if you want to have a conversation, I'm always up to give entrepreneurs advice. I always talk to people that need help. Just shoot me a text. I rarely answer the phone, but shoot me a text and we'll have a conversation there. Then take it to a phone call. But I'm an open book. I love helping people. I, I got here because people opened their lives to me. You know, Josh Nelson's of the world, the Billy Jean Shaw's of the world, the Chris Patterson's, you know, those people opened their world to me, which then allowed me to grow. And so I only I owe it back to the community of people who need that shortcut or that piece of advice or that motivation to like you create a podcast yeah talking about it well matt that's amazing and i want to tell the audience matt is the real deal i met matt uh, about a year ago and through a, an agency we're involved in josh nelson seven figure agency uh an amazing coaching group but matt and i ended up chatting probably for the first time seven eight months ago when we were on a, on a call and matt happened to be one of the mentors and i just as he mentioned i asked him some questions and he gave me real practical advice and matt's always been available to do that he's an incredibly abundance-minded entrepreneur uh i encourage you reach out if not pay attention to what matt's doing because whether you're in the restaurant business or not you can learn a ton about how to promote your business and how to market by just watching what Matt's doing. It's a tremendous resource and a great guy on top of it. So Matt, thank you so much for your time today. I know you are slam busy. I'm so grateful for the time you gave us. Uh, have a very Merry Christmas. This will probably air after that, but oh. hey, uh, that's all right. Have a very Merry Christmas and I uh, hope you have a blessed new year, my friend. Hey, thanks, Jonathan. Thank you for having me on. I appreciate the friendship and you know, you're you you're giving me all these accolades. You're an amazing uh, human businessman as well. So the, everything goes back to you. I appreciate all you've done for me because a lot of times me having those conversations you know, and coaching people and mentoring people, I'm like, oh crap, I should, I should probably do more of that. I should probably do that. There's been times I give advice. I'm like, oh, that's a good idea. Maybe I should do it. So I, I appreciate it. I appreciate what you bring to the community. I love you doing this podcast and everybody take your 91 days, take your thousand bucks and go make it happen. Awesome. All right. Have a happy new year. Thanks everybody.